So hello everyone. Uh, one of the things you're going to discover is I make a serious effort to be on time. It's usually not quite as uh, manic and uh, determined uh, as it has been this afternoon, but uh, here we go. It's 4 o'clock. Let's get started. Welcome to 302. Welcome to a class that combines technical content with an attempt to show some of the ways in which accounting is a vital part of a much larger world. How communication skills are part of that essential skill set that will help you, that will help so many of you to achieve remarkable success in accounting, finance, business, and elsewhere. Welcome to a class in which I've always attempted to make you aware of some new and recent cutting edge material, things that you should be aware of. Like, for instance, the new effective fiscal year end 2018 for SEC reporters, ASC 606 revenue recognition standard. We'll spend a few days on that later in the semester. If you're paying attention, you're going to find it confusing because the new standard is so different from what you learned in 102. When you get into the workplace, you'll be amazed at how that standard interacts with so many other parts of the business and finance world. And I know that the foundation you get for that in 302 will help you all with the learning that you're going to need to do on the job. If you're paying attention to today's class, you're also going to be exposed to some new and perhaps confusing material, different from what you might have known or believed prior to today. And I hope and believe that today's class will help you build a foundation that will serve you well as you enter the discussion, the discussion space of concerns and questions that are widely shared now and will be shared by such a wider audience in the weeks and days to come. Why did you come to Geneseo? Well, the school has a great reputation. We have a special set of values. They are warm and loving and involve treating each other with respect and decency. We have a reputation for academic excellence. We have a reputation for having a lot of smart kids who are pushed to achieve more than they imagined possible. How do we push them to achieve that excellence? Well, one way is to have them compete with other excellent students. Last December, when virtually all of you here in this room, except for the guests, attended the uh, first extra office hour session for 302, an optional event that you went to anyway, in part because you know a lot of other plenty smart kids from 301 who were planning to attend, you met some of the excellent students from last year's 302. I'm incredibly grateful to them for showing up then, for showing up today, and for helping you to get through this course and to go on and achieve the excellence in your professional life that already you've shown such a keen interest in obtaining. So Patrick, Angela, Ben, Adam, Brian, um, thank you so much, I mean, for all that you contribute to this. We also push you by recruiting faculty who are creative, demanding, and passionately devoted to your success at Geneseo and in your professional life afterwards. I have the reputation of being one of those kinds of professors. I was inspired in my early years at this college by others who had that reputation. I've got colleagues who have that reputation. And as I approach in the next 20 or 30 years, the end of my professional life at this college, I'm sustained by the hope that Geneseo and the School of Business will retain the ability to attract the same kind of faculty that I have always aspired to be. Geneseo's reputation and the value of your degree in the future depends on that reputation, on that ability that we'll have as a college to attract the absolute best in faculty. What else creates a great reputation for School of Business? People who build programs that support the success of our students. How do you build anything? Generally, you follow a good leader, someone who knows how to get things done, who motivates and energizes you. What kind of a leader does the School of Business have? Well, that person is called a dean. What does a dean do? Well, let me give you an example of some things that deans do, of what our dean has done in only the last three and a half years since arriving at Geneseo. Develop a vision and strategic plan for the school, which led to things like the new management, marketing, and finance programs. Seek feedback from professionals to ensure that programs we offer give students the knowledge and skills needed for success today and tomorrow. Help recruit new students who become future alum and donors. Build and maintain relationships with alumni, employers, 
Visit them at their firms. Tell them what's going on at the School of Business. Find ways to help students connect with alumni on campus. For example, career panels. Get alums to come to campus to participate in events such as the mock interview and resume re review event. Organize events at the Student Alumni Finance Conference and the executives and residents. Organize the finance part of the trip. Raise funds from alumni and donors to send students on trips like the New York trip, the CFA Research Challenge, the Fed Challenge, the Game Form, and to pay for special school events like the holiday party, the graduation party. Raise funds for the construction of new facilities, such as the trading room. Conduct student orientation and other professional development events to assure that 100% of our students get the minimum skills that we know they need in order to succeed. Review resumes, memo, cover letters, and conduct mock interviews so our students will be as prepared as possible for the job search process in the world's best firms and competitive with students at all the other schools that do these things for their students. Meet with new employers to get them to recruit at Geneseo. Run events such as the Beta Gamma Sigma induction ceremony. Here are some of the things that we have in progress right now, or had in progress up until January 3rd of this year. Implementing the new strategic plan, monitoring progress, raising resource to achieve, to resources to achieve goals. Adding new business data analytics program. Getting our curriculum to align with the CFA University Recognition Program. Since 100% of the money that we spend on students for a lot of these things come from uh, alumni, we need to make sure that they're energized and involved in what we're doing here at the School of Business. We have to add new opportunities, such as the AMA chapter or PWC challenge for uh, student case studies. We need to reduce class size by advocating for new faculty lines at the School of Business. We need to build the finance program, finance part of the New York City trip. We need to develop a student alumni finance conference. We have the Accounting Excellence Breakfast, which has been moved to uh, the spring from the banquet uh, in the fall that we didn't hold this year because we're redoing a lot of the recruiting events around the accounting program. The dean is taking a leadership role in that. Final implementation of the new uh, professional development program. So that includes organizing mock interviews, getting alumni participation, matching students and uh, alums. We have a peer mentor program that needs to be uh, developed. Uh, renovation of other existing facilities or acquisition of uh, additional space. Many of you are doing uh, classes in Fraser 215. That's an example of what, mean, what we mean by uh, a new space. Uh, we certainly could use some enhancements to that. We'd love to have breakout rooms for teams to meet and pursue uh, projects. We're able to just get started a um, special uh, study room for the master's students, uh, which I think has helped them a lot, and a bunch of other things. So my point with all of this is that although so many of you realize that when you came to Geneseo and the School of Business because of the great reputation it has, one of the reasons you came here was because of Dean Rotundo, even if you didn't know her. Even if you've met her and she's pushed you like all the other great faculty I described, and even if you're one of those people, like all of us, who doesn't always like being pushed, a big part of the reason that you came to this school, to SUNY Geneseo, is because of Dean Rotundo. And now, in the middle of the weirdest few weeks that I've spent in 22 and a half years at Geneseo, in the midst of circumstances so weird that they have thrown every single part of the Geneseo community into a bit of chaos, from the School of Business to the campus administration to faculty in virtually every department on campus, to SUNY Central in Albany, to alumni and donor groups, and soon enough to students and their parents and people they know and future students and faculty, in the middle of circumstances that, in the words of one friend and colleague, are unprecedented in 50 years, and he should know because he's taught in this campus for most of those 50 years, well, today is going to have a few more weird circumstances. And from today's class, there should, be, should go out a call for deep, searching, comprehensive, evidence-based, 
and sober inquiry into some of the matters that I raised today and into related matters that others are raising. I'm not going to ask you to take my word on this for anything. In fact, I'll be quite disappointed if you do. Accountants demand evidence. They examine evidence, they certify evidence, and they communicate it to others who rely on that evidence to make important decisions. That's what we do as accountants. And 302 students in particular, pay attention because there will be a no fooling quiz at the end of this class. So I'm doing a lot of things today that I've never done before, but 2018 is already shaping up to be a year of firsts, and plenty more are coming. So here are a couple of legal disclaimers before we go any further. You've all had these before, right? Prof gets up in front of the room and says, my lawyers told me to say this stuff so that it'll be on the record, right? It happens all the time. So where's the first one? Dang, I must have misplaced that. <laughs> Whoops, now my mind is starting to wander. There's some pretty funny books about academia that I've read over the years. Richard Russo, Jane Smiley, Ken Galbraith, others. Funny things happen in a school. Funny like students and their parents and all the other people who have to live in the real world wouldn't believe. So these kinds of things, sometimes fictionalized, sometimes exaggerated for comic effect, sometimes completely made up and sometimes thinly veiled descriptions of things that actually happen, they're funny. Schools are funny places. Let me give you a hypothetical, made up, fictionalized, for instance, the kind of story that I mean. Say some professor at a public liberal arts college, some out of the way rural location like Iowa or Missouri, Western New York, gets the idea in her head that as a result of some weird campus politics, the college's head of fundraising got involved in a plot to fire the head of a really popular, successful, and well-respected department. How the music department say? And this professor, cellist say, who was tuned into a lot of influential alum, donors and friends of the college who were all successful, and when the news got out, they all go ballistic. Why did you fire the head of the music department right before the student orchestra world tour? Why did you do that? This cellist goes to a meeting with a head fundraiser. And based on some things that happened in the last 24 hours that convinced the cellist that the president who fired the head of the music department right before the student orchestra world tour is on his way out, that he's not particularly well liked by the college in general and that he's bitterly resented by some uh, and that all of the donors are unhappy and that not even the president survive, professionally speaking, that kind of pressure especially when a ton of other things start coming out of the closet. Well, the cellist goes to a meeting with the campus chief fundraiser and says, you know, you want to think what will happen to you when the president goes, whether it's better to get fired by the next president or to get out while the getting's good. Getting fired could harm your career. This is a pretty shocking thing to say for a cellist. Maybe it's a pretty shocking thing for the fundraiser, whose only friend on campus just happens to be the president. Funny thing about shocking opinions, we can never get inside somebody's head. We never know for sure what they're going to think about what something that was said. We never know for sure what they're going to think about something that is said. Fortunately for the cellist, though there fortunately for the cellist though, there are witnesses to the meeting, including the well known geology professor, Dr. Z, who's wicked smart and has this well known rep for taking really outstanding notes. It's like having a video camera in the room. So this conversation is happening around the table, totally civil. The chief fundraiser makes a number of comments that defend his performance, and Dr. Z gets it all down on paper and files it away. After the cellist leaves for another meeting, she had to get to, um, the chief fundraiser gets really angry, like acting crazy angry. And you know how funny people are when you get angry. So she goes running downstairs to the president's office screaming, what can we do to punish this professor? Well, part of what makes no novels about colleges so funny, makes colleges so different from other places, is that the president has to give the answer that college presidents all over the world give. Namely, you know, not much. Hardly anything I can think of, actually. If I actually tried to do anything, it would probably make matters ten times worse or some number larger than 10. That's because the cellist is tenured. She's super respected. She knows the most amazing collection of people. 
She made a couple of bucks in the stock market, a couple of other things. Oh, yeah, she's also a fully paid up member of this really strong union that all the teachers belong to. See how the characters have these really asymmetric strengths? You've got the super powerful president, as presidents are, and then you've got this cellist who kind of comes out of nowhere. And you've got the makings of this really funny and completely nonviolent conflict. Plus, the cellist has a pretty good cause. She thinks it was a really stupid decision to fire the head of the music department right before the student orchestra world tour. She's appalled that no planning had been done. There wasn't even a bus to the airport. No one seems to know anything about it, and no one is saying anything. I mean, it's just a total mess. Meanwhile, the president and the chief fundraiser start plotting against the cellist. One of them gets an idea. Didn't the cellist use the word harm? Couldn't we twist his words into an allegation that he physically threatened the chief fundraiser? Couldn't we use that as some means of keeping the cellist off campus? So they go to Jim Bixby, the head of the campus HR, and they file a grievance against the cellist and try to get her barred from campus. There has to be hearing on that, and Dr. Z shows up to save the day. The grievance case basically gets laughed out of court. It's a little technical, a little more technical than that, but uh, it's basically what happens. There's a lot more to this hypothetical, but like most novels with a happy ending, the bad guys get fired, the head of the music department gets reinstated in the nick of time, the student orchestra uh, world tour is like this insane success. And at the end of the deal, the cellist has bought a nice place off campus, and she's back to Bach. So that's all weird. Where's I going with this? Yeah, importance of deans, legal disclosure. Got it. We're back on track. So legal disclosure number one, and I think I've got this uh, down pretty cold because I've uh, had to say it uh, so more. I have never threatened the physical safety. I've never threatened harm to our Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Johnson Bowles, and I would never do that. Uh, as soon as I heard that there was any concern that I might have done that, I immediately contacted uh, campus security, and I know that they have a log of this conversation. I explained the concern that might arise over uh, my role on this campus, and I pledged to the secretary with whom I first spoke before I uh, spoke to an officer that I was calling from off campus and that I would not set foot on this campus until after I had uh, conferred with an officer from uh, campus security and assured him that I had absolutely no intentions of doing anything violent, which has been kind of characteristic of the way I've behaved here for 22 and a half years. Uh, and I gave him uh, contact information when I finally spoke to the officer. Here's my cell phone. Here's my email. You can reach me, uh, you know, at Geneseo and pledged uh, if I get any instructions uh, from you or from HR, I'll immediately follow them to uh, the letter. Uh, so that is kind of a legal uh, disclosure, and that's something that we all as Geneseans should certainly endorse 100%. There's zero place on a college campus for any intimidation, any threats, any um, action that would uh, make someone fear for uh, physical safety. I guess in spite of the fact, and here's, this is what happens, you kind of lose track when you get, uh, you know, a little older. Um, so I'm kind of back to my hypothetical. Wouldn't it be funny if the um, chief fundraiser and uh, the president actually had some of the campus security uh, detailed the stand guard outside the door, right? I mean, that would never happen, but I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, well, let me get to a uh, second uh, legal disclosure, legal disclosure uh, number two. And this one I don't have uh, quite verbatim, uh, but you see it printed at the bottom of uh, virtually every case study that you get from Harvard uh, Business School. 
And it has words to the effect that uh, the facts in this case study are designed to promote um, classroom discussion of a management uh, situation. They're not intended to uh, depict effective or ineffective uh, handling of any particular uh, management situation. They're just used in an educational setting to uh, promote discussion. So getting back to the importance of a dean to the School of Business and all the things that uh, he or she does to support your future success, and there'll be copies of this posted. They'll be suitably uh, cleaned up, and you can review all this material for yourself and um, understand a little bit more about the importance of a dean to a school of business. Well, on January 3rd, just two weeks ago, days before a 1,000 of you, and I'm speaking to a 1,000 students at the uh, School of Business, uh, just days before a 1,000 of you returned for spring semester classes, in the middle of several dozen initiatives and programs that will support your success, like the ones that I talked about in uh, what a dean does, with apparently minimal a more likely non-existent consultation with any stakeholder group, and this was confirmed as recently as uh, an hour ago by the campus provost, Dr. Stacy Robinson, uh, a woman for whom I have the greatest respect, um, with definitely zero communication with any of the people who would be most affected, including most directly you, the students, and for no reason that has been explained or made public or that based on what several of us know is the likely actual reason for uh, the decision, the president fired our dean. The president fired our dean. There was no warning, no explanation, and for more than a week, no external calculation, no, no external communication. And when that communication did come, a lot of people found it strange and inadequate. Let all this sink in for a minute. Before, in a setting in which operates under AAUP traditions of academic freedom, in which is part of the SUNY system, which is part of New York State, which is part of the United States of America, which is subject to the supreme law of the land, which is the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment thereto, which gives us all the broadest possible basis in which to freely discuss matters of academic governance. Let all this sink in. Before, in a 300-level school of business class, the details of a management situation that I am assembling into a case study and whose intent is to promote, for educational purposes, classroom discussion of a management situation. One key theme in business and accounting education is the importance of communication and consultation with stakeholders and advisory groups prior to making any st strategic decisions or taking any strategic actions. Common sense, right? You talk to your parents before choosing Geneseo. You'll probably talk to a few friends and relatives before getting married or any other decision of similar import. In my case study, I'll be looking at the organization of the SUNY Geneseo campus uh, administration and the communication from that uh, administration. I'm not a fly on the wall in any of the meetings that I'm going to discuss, and I fully accept that there is much about this case study that I don't know yet, and although a surprising amount of detail is emerging just in the last week. I'm going to explain why it is interesting that no one from most or all of the stakeholder groups has stepped forward to explain or even support the dean's dismissal. I'm going to point out a few areas in which there is a lot of anger and um, surprise. And I'm going to continue updating this case study as more and more people come forward to help me fill in the blanks. From the college's website, here's uh, a organization chart. Uh, apologize for the Letters being a little uh, small, you can see the president uh, up at top, and she has a tough job. I mean, there's a lot to manage on uh, any uh, campus, and there are a lot of people uh, who are necessary or uh, deemed necessary, at least, to uh, help her do what, or him do what uh, needs to be done. Um,
this guy Vacant seems to be getting around all over the place. Uh, you got to admire that when someone can wear a lot of hats. It's uh, pretty helpful. Uh, I know that uh, my campus colleague, uh, Dr. Iyer, is uh, teaching this uh, spring that she's stepping back from uh, that role. And down here in little print, of course, is Dean Rotundo, who is, as of today, not acting in her uh, capacity as uh, a dean. Let me give kind of a simpler view of how governance, in my view, my opinion, my understanding, so here I am professing, uh, let me give you a view of how um, campus administration ought to work for a strategic decision when you remove a very visible and very important and very uh, vital person from uh, a function. There are a lot of people that you need to have in the loop that you want to get uh, advice from, that you need to keep uh, informed, and that are going to support you as time goes forward. So one of those um, functions is called the Geneseo uh, Council. And it consists of a lot of people who know the college over a period of many years. Uh, all of them have served for, uh, served under at least three uh, college presidents. Uh, so Dr. Battles, uh, her predecessor, Dr. Long, and uh, her predecessor, uh, Dr. Chris Dahl. Uh, they've got what you refer to as institutional memory. They kind of know who's on campus, how people feel about things, where the strengths are, where the problems are. That's really important for any kind of organization to have uh, some continuity. And uh, just from the um, webs here, uh, website, advise the college's senior administration, provide valuable assistance for problem solving and identifying sources of uh, expertise. Well, uh, no one has stepped forward from that extremely senior college council to explain or comment or justify or support the decision to fire the dean in the middle of the uh, academic year. We have the Geneseo Foundation, which is the body for assembling all the philanthropic um, resources, the donated funds to uh, the college uh, campus. And they support not only the uh, School of Business, but they support programs all over the rest of uh, Geneseo. They're part of what contributes to that outstanding reputation that brought you to this campus in uh, the first place. Um, no one has stepped forward from uh, that particular group to explain, to defend, to support the decision to fire the dean in the middle of uh, the academic year. And uh, in fact, uh, I've had conversations with people who were on the foundation or involved with the foundation who've expressed uh, a lot of the same emotions that, uh, that I do. So that's not really part of the uh, picture. There's something called the President's Cabinet. And think back to uh, that org chart with the President and then uh, vice presidents in charge of all the different uh, aspects of uh, the college. And that would include Megan Arena, who is uh, responsible for overseeing uh, student recruitment. She does all the uh, admissions. Um, Dr. Robert uh, Bonfilio, who's in charge of uh, student life. I think all of you uh, have received communications from him, which uh, probably like the communications you get from the rest of us you haven't read, but uh, that's who Bob Bonfilio is. Um, Johnson Bowles, who is uh, the Vice President for Advancement, and she runs the uh, Geneseo Foundation. Uh, Gail Glover, Mike, I think it is Hurley, um, temporary uh, head of uh, finance administration. I don't know uh, Mike. Uh, Dr. Stacy Robertson, who I referred to uh, earlier, and uh, another uh, individual, um, who uh, serves as a senior uh, support for uh, the president, kind of uh, an administrative uh, assistant. Um, 
doctor, and I'm not good with names that I'm just reading for the first time, so I apologize to uh, Heather Loban Vervong, uh, is a PhD. She's got some pretty interesting uh, experiences. She is extremely uh, portable, and I'm sure um, if she ever decides to not be here on this campus, that she's going to have a lot of very good um, professional uh, opportunities uh, for her. Um, and, uh, you know, if she ever made that decision just entirely of her own uh, volition, that would be the uh, case. Well, not everybody on the president's cabinet has uh, participated in uh, this decision in as of um, today, to the best of my knowledge, I'm running a little behind in answering all the email and the phone calls that I've been getting in the last uh, 10 days. Um, I'm not yet aware of any uh, vocal support for the decision to fire the dean in the middle of the academic year. We have a business advisory council, and that's essential to uh, the function of the School of Business. It consists of a lot of uh, senior um, graduates from, uh, so senior people who are graduates of uh, Geneseo in uh, the School of Business, um, people who have achieved a lot of the success that we want all of you to achieve, and they're in a position to offer incredible arrays of, arrays of uh, support, judgment, guidance, uh, along with uh, the fact that many of them being very uh, generous. I can tell you to an absolute moral certainty that you're not going to uh, hear any support from the School of Business uh, Advisory Council for uh, the President's decision to fire the Dean in the middle of the uh, academic year because every person I've talked to on our Business uh, Advisory Council, uh, let me be polite here because uh, who knows, uh, my little rant may be a little more widely circulated than just here this uh, afternoon. So let me be a little polite and say simply that there's uh, anger and confusion over the decision to fire the dean in the middle of the academic year. We have the School of Business, um, which includes me and uh, you know about 30 really outstanding uh, colleagues. It used to be run by a dean but it hasn't been run by a dean since January 3rd, when in the middle of the academic year, the president fired the dean. Who are some of the important stakeholders in the School of Business? Well, students, uh, faculty, a uh, lot of recruiters who come onto uh, campus and look for um, people that they want to attract to the accounting firms, the banks, the finance groups, the other uh, companies that so dearly need uh, capable young people to uh, join them, and parents, you know, who provide an awful lot of uh, support for students in, you know, without whom all of us wouldn't be here, and, you know, a lot of you wouldn't be here in this room uh, at Geneseo. Was there any consulting on the decision? Uh, prior to it, uh, it's being made? Was there any notification to them in the immediate aftermath of that? Was there any planning that suggests uh, any level of concern whatsoever on the impact that this decision would have for so many people? Uh, no, there wasn't. There are other people that you reach out to in uh, making a decision like that, kind of unofficial uh, basis people. You talk to old guys, that's kind of the polite way of uh, what we say, senior faculty, um, but you know, people have been around <laughs> for a while. Uh, you talk to distinguished uh, professors, uh, and that's the highest rank in the SUNY system, so I'm a full professor, but uh, not yet been uh, promoted to a st distinguished professor, who knows, may never get there, but uh, you know, every campus has uh, six or eight um, distinguished professors around the whole campus. Uh, they can be a really good source of uh, input. I haven't yet heard any of my colleagues on campus who were distinguished professors uh, come forward and say, yep, we support the 
uh, president, the decision to fire the dean in the middle of the academic year was uh, a good decision. Uh, alumni or employers uh, haven't heard any of those people come forward to support this uh, decision. How was it made? Well, let me talk about a couple of uh, people that I know uh, have the year of uh, the president in, um, I'm sure, advised her on um, the decision to fire the dean in the middle of the academic year. Uh, the gentleman to President Battle's uh, right is her husband, uh, someone named Mark Nels, and someone who I have on very good authority is a great guy. He's a nice person to sit down uh, and have a cup of coffee with. I'm not yet aware of any uh, official position that uh, he has, which uh, by SUNY policy would give him uh, standing to advise the president on a strategic uh, decision of the import uh, of the import of uh, firing a dean, uh, but you know we're human, and you know it's very natural for people to turn to uh, their spouse for advice. I mean, obviously that happens all the time uh, on an informal basis, and you know we're all happy to have that kind of uh, support from uh, a spouse. And uh, over here is a picture of um, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, uh, Johnson Bowles, uh, who I know was uh, in very involved in the decision to fire the dean uh, because she was there in the room when, uh, when it happened. So she's had some kind of uh, input. Again, because there hasn't been very much said uh, about the process for making this decision, and there hasn't been any defense of it that has been made public by uh, the administration. I don't yet know uh, more about it. I'm talking to an increasing number of uh, people who are providing me pretty interesting insights into further avenues of uh, investigation. So it may well be that there are quite a few other uh, people who were involved in uh, the decision, and you know, we'll find out. I look forward to adding to this uh, in my case study that I intend to publish uh, with co-authors as uh, a uh, scholarly work. So it's really an understatement to say that this decision has created a lot of chaos in the Geneseo community. So now I'm going to end with a request. I say to all the powers of SUNY, I say to SUNY Chancellor Kristen M. Johnson, I say to New York State Governor Cuomo, and most importantly, I say to all Geneseans who love our beautiful college, if you truly want to support the success of our school of business and the students it serves, if you want to quell the burgeoning roles of outrage the abrupt dismissal of a respected and accomplished leader, who happens, by the way, to be a woman, if you care about the reputation and the future of our college, if you want to reverse what so many regard as a cruel and ugly action that in no way reflects our Geneseo value, values, if you want to do all of those things, come to Geneseo and find out what is happening on this campus. And Chancellor Johnson, Governor Cuomo, give us our dean back now. That's the end of uh, prepared remarks. Usually, uh, I've got a pretty detailed lesson plan for what I want to do in 75 minutes that we have twice a week to look at a lot of issues relating to uh, professional accountancy. And this is a class I've taught quite a few times, so uh, I kind of know how to pace things. And, uh, you know, we stick to that particular uh, schedule um, pretty easily. Um, 
this is a first uh, for me to open the um, the first ever for me to open a class in this particular uh, manner. Pretty much of a first for me to uh, have a class plan that I haven't uh, rehearsed in uh, completely gone through a couple of times and you know I've got the pacing I've got the words I've got all that uh, stuff down it's pretty obvious I didn't uh, uh, this afternoon although clearly had some prep could have done better but uh, you know just ran out of time uh, we've got another 35 minutes here together how do you want to spend it what do you want to do do you have anything to say? Do you have any questions? At some point we can get to that quiz. It's actually going to be a little simpler than some of the quizzes you'll have in uh, the spring. It's going to have, uh, I'm just kind of making it up right now, uh, have your natural name because it's kind of important to uh, know that you were here. Uh, and then it will have uh, whatever you want it to have. Uh, and here's what I mean. Uh, you may want to write something on it, and you'll see that uh, I put a big focus on uh, professional communication in 302 because it's such an important part of being successful in achieving things in the business life, the ability to write in a way that is rapidly and clearly uh, understood. Uh, so you can write something along with your natural name, and that's just fine. Or uh, option B, uh, we might go to a two-envelope kind of vote uh, style um, approach. And the way that that works is uh, you write something like a ballot, you know, I vote for this guy, I vote for her. I, uh, abstain from uh, everything. So whatever you write on a piece of paper in, we've got paper here in uh, the classroom, that goes into one envelope and then the uh, envelope that you write goes into a second envelope and you only put your name on the second envelope. So when everything is uh, counted uh, or reviewed or opened, uh, here's the process. You got observer team with a uh, clipboard and uh, they kind of go through, you know, here are all the people. Uh, was there a response from this particular person? Yep, check the uh, name off. And you open the envelope and then somebody throws the internal um, envelope, the second envelope, into a big box. So it's completely anonymous. Uh, that's the way that a lot of votes are uh, cast that may be the way that the campus vote of no confidence in the administration of uh, Denise Battles takes place later this uh, semester. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, feel freest to uh, express themselves when they have no fear of uh, retaliation or any injury. Uh, I'm in a position in my life that's pretty different from uh, your position, so it's easy. You know, it's just not a problem at all. It's simple uh, to uh, speak in the way I've done, uh, which I sure couldn't have done uh, at, at age 20. Uh, so that's a couple of uh, options. You guys want to write for a few minutes? Well, um, do you all have one piece of paper? Uh, and if you don't, uh, we've got some paper in the background, uh, big believer in writing, so let's spend a little time on that. <clears throat> 